Okay, welcome back. We are working with uh, our basic op art as the base document for creating a series of op art groups. And you'll notice that we really shift our colors to having a lot more gradients and variety uh, in terms of the distortions that we do to the shapes and uh, the actual shape types that we use. So let's play with this. Okay, when we have the basic op art done, we've grouped it. All right, and we're going to try to make sure we group it every time we make a new op art uh, cluster. Now, one of the fun things that we'll play with is instead of just scaling down, we may opt to do some scale and rotation by going to Object, Transform, Transform Each. So, I will show you that right now. I'm going to take the one group that we have and just kind of move it off to the side. And now I'm going to grab my shape tear off because I like to kind of see all the shapes all at once. And I think I'd like to make a star, so I'm going to go ahead and click and drag. Now it's remembering the settings that I had uh, from the last object. White fill, black stroke weight, 20 points. Uh, maybe I will up the number of arrows. We'll go with the seven pointed star. And I'm going to go ahead and switch up my colors. Maybe I'll choose a nice gradient. Maybe I want that gradient to be radial. And since this is a warm color, I think I'll choose something cool for the stroke. Great. And I think I'm going to reduce the stroke. I don't know, 14 or 13 or 12. Okay, I like that a lot. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do a basic uh, scale transformation. Okay, right click, transform, scale. And it remembers my settings of 85%. You could change it. Maybe we'll go 80%. We'll hit copy. And then we hit Control D. Control D repeats the last transformation. So I clicked that about a dozen times. And now I have a nice op art group here. So I will click and drag a box with my selection arrow, right click, and choose Group. All right. Now that is a basic scale transformation. Let me go ahead and do another star. And I'll go ahead and Maybe I'll shift the colors around a little later, but I'm going to go ahead and do something else. This time I'm going to go to Object, Transform, and do Transform Each. Now this is what's mentioned in the back half of the, the handout. Um, what we want to do is adjust not only the scale, but also the rotation. Okay, So we do want to have scale strokes and effects, and scale corners, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it to be 85% for horizontal and 85% for vertical. And I'm going to ask it to rotate, let's say, 30 degrees every time we make a copy. So we'll click Copy, and then Control D, and then Control D, and you can see each one is turning 30 degrees as it rotates. And that gives us a nice kind of floral appearance, which I really like. So I'm going to press V to get back to the selection arrow, click and drag a box around my shapes, and right click and tell them to group. If you remember your shortcuts, group is Control G. Okay, Control D repeats whatever transformation we did. Control G allows us to group all the selected objects. So select Control G, and now I can click on this and move it as a single object, despite it having a dozen or so uh, copies of itself. Now, when you have uh, gradients applied to the fill of your shape, you don't necessarily need a stroke. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose none for the stroke on this to let you take a look at how, how that appears. All right, pretty fun. I really like the look that we get from doing that. So I'll take this group, shrink it down, move it off to the side, and you can rearrange the order if you want to have the star here in front, I can right click and go to arrange and tell it to bring to the front. Okay, the keyboard shortcut for that is control shift and the right bracket key. That brings it to the front. Or if you use the bracket key with control, you can go back one layer at a time. Right now it's behind. Bring it up, bring it up, send it back. Okay, so I'll just play with arranging things. Now we have other things that we can do to our groups as we create them. So if I take, say, a polygon tool and I'm going to click and drag to make a new one. Maybe I want to make a pentagon. So I'll press down until I have five sides. 
I'm going to go ahead and press D to get back to the default fill of white and stroke of black. I'll pump up my stroke and I think I'll probably switch up my colors too. Let me go with green on the fill and then we'll do like a, a red on the stroke. That will give me a pretty good set of contrasts. Now I can also do another effect, but previously we did a distortion effect. I'm going to try one called Pucker and Bloat. So let's see what that looks like when we pucker it or bloat it. Ooh, we're getting a nice floral kind of thing. So I am going to go ahead and bloat this. 66% is a totally arbitrary number. You could type in anything and then hit the tab key and it'll preview for you uh, what you have. So I'll bloat it at 50%. And then I want to do Object Expand Appearance. Now this is a step you may be able to skip. Um, but sometimes as you shrink things that have um, effects applied to them, it'll get a little bit wonky and they'll start to look bad as they get really, really small. So I like to expand the appearance first. Okay, That changes what the uh, stroke, um, the path actually uh, looks like. Now I can also change this stroke. I think I would like the stroke to be on the outside. So let me select this shape and look at our stroke. 10. Ooh, it's not letting me align it to the outside, which I'm not a huge fan of, but we'll live with it. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to do two different transformations with this. I'm going to do transform scale to do a basic one. Okay, we'll do it at 75% and copy. So that's pretty fun. Okay, go ahead and select all the pieces, right click and group. But now I want to make another one just like that. So I'll make another pentagon. I clicked once to create the pentagon. I'm going to do the pucker and bloat. And I'm going to do the expand appearance. But now when I use my selection tool, I'm going to right click and do transform each. Because that's going to allow me to do not only scale but also rotation. So maybe we'll do minus 25 degrees with each copy. Pressing copy is one of the most important things to take away from this. All right, so we'll go to copy, and then if we press Control D, we're really getting a floral pattern. And I like that one a lot. Okay, so I will select them all and group them. Now the other thing is once you have the different fill and strokes applied to these shapes, you're still free to change up your settings. So for this one, we have a plain green fill. Well, maybe I want to put a gradient on the fill. So I'll ask for a gradient. Okay, That alone looks pretty cool. I'll zoom in on that. But I can also adjust the gradient. As we did previously, you can drag colors down into the mix. You can take colors that are in there and rearrange them, or even remove them by dragging them out of the bottom of the window. That's really fun. I may remove the stroke weight again. I'm going to choose the none. It's white with a red slash. And that's showing us a pretty neat effect. So what we're going to do is play around with different shapes. Even something as simple as a rectangle can look pretty cool when you do this, especially if we decide we're going to distort it first. So let me go ahead and make a, an effect. Uh, let's try a new one we did zigzag, we did pucker and bloat, let's try twist. Alright, so let's see what a preview would look like if we twist this 70 degrees. Pretty cool. What if we change that to 180 degrees? Whoa! Alright, I like that a lot. So, I'm going to click OK, and again, the box is showing as a box still, so we want to do expand appearance. I don't think we can get to it by right clicking, so we have to go to object, expand appearance. I do wish they had a shortcut for that, but it just doesn't exist. So we'll expand the appearance. Now the path that creates the shape fits what it actually looked like. All right, so maybe I'll assign a stroke weight with purple. I would really like the stroke to go on the outside this time, so I'm going to change my alignment. I click the word stroke. And I'm choosing outside. Okay. So I'm going to do another transformation. Again, I like to test the shapes both by doing scale. Okay, we'll do a 90% copy. Control D all the way down. So that's doing 
a straight scale transformation. Okay, I'll select them and make them a group. Now I want to do the same shape, so maybe what I'll do is I'll select the outermost shape, copy and paste it. In this one, I'm going to do transform each. So I'll do transform, transform each. So I'll do minus 30, and we'll do this time we'll actually have you get horizontally smaller more quickly than vertically smaller. So it'll get vertically smaller at 90% and horizontally smaller at 75%. So the shape is actually going to squash a little bit as it gets smaller. So let's do copy, control D, control D, control D. That's a lot of fun. We're getting kind of a Nautilus effect. All right, so I'm going to select them all, right click and group. I'll scale this up and I'll kind of see how that looks. I'll zoom in on a bunch. I like that. I like the colors I picked for that. Right, but remember, you can select your group and you can change up the colors that you have. You can rearrange them. And you can drag new ones in. Maybe we'll throw a little. Ooh, like that a lot. All right. So, zoom back out. And maybe I'll send this one to the back. Arrange, send to the back. So that puts it behind some of my other choices. And again, we have some that might look better with no stroke. So you can also press the down arrow and choose no stroke by typing zero in, or you can just choose none from the selector. You're allowed to do uh, changes to your um, object after it's been grouped. So what if we did a distortion to the whole thing after we grouped it? We haven't done that yet. Let's tell it to zigzag. Ooh, and I might be playing with fire here because I haven't saved yet. Okay, look at that. Not responding. I asked it to do something fairly complicated. I may have burned myself here. Let's see. All right, because it freaked out on me a little bit, I'm going to hit cancel and just do a quick save because I don't want to lose my stuff. I'm going to press D and change this back to a plain black and white set of images. Then maybe we'll go ahead and play with adding a uh, distortion filter. So, effect, distort and transform. We'll do zigzag. Ooh, that's kind of fun. Maybe a little less. We'll do more ridges per segment. Ooh, all right, all right. If we do a lot, it's going to go bananas on us <laughs> really, really quickly. Um, try smooth. I'll go ahead and let it have the corners. Okay. So that's kind of neat looking, but you can see it's getting dominated by the um, the stroke color. The stroke color is the same throughout; it doesn't scale down. So I'm going to actually abandon any stroke color, and I think if I apply a gradient to this, I'll be more happy with the end result. Now this is a linear gradient. I may change it to be a radial gradient. And again, I may also change it to have a few more colors. So you can click between any two points and assign new colors. You can mix them just by double clicking. Okay. So let's see what that looks like. Honestly, this one isn't working for me too much. I think I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Or maybe I'll just take the zigzag and throw it out. So I'll select under the appearance window, the zigzag, and I'm going to just hit the trash. And that takes it back to being more of a normal group. Okay. So I'll move that one around. Again, we want to scale these down, move them around. Try to fill your page. Right? We don't want to leave any white behind. Send to the back. I yeah, probably have room for one more, so I'll save it. Let's play with one more shape. I'll do a star, and I'll do a many, many pointed star. I'll hit the up arrow about five or six times. And I think I'm going to twist this star first. Transform, distort, I'm sorry, effect, distort, and transform. And we'll twist. Ooh, that's doing a lot. What if I just twist it 30 degrees? How does that look? Cool. Okay, so it looks a little bit almost like a saw blade. I'm going to go ahead and expand the appearance. Then we're going to do transform scale. You're 80%. Why not? Copy. 
and then control D it remembers the last thing that we did so again the page is starting to fill up if you have difficulty selecting uh, all of the shapes maybe you're constantly picking another group when this happens you can click with the selection tool on one shape and then ask it to select same fill and stroke and because this is the only object that has this fill with no stroke I believe oh, it grabbed all of them plus this other uh, group I'm gonna go ahead and hold shift to deselect this group so now I've got all of those together again right click group and we're in business I like what I've got so I'm gonna play with the arrangement maybe I'll send this one back a couple of layers maybe send this one to the back as long as we end up filling our space with examples of our group I think we'll be happy with the end result and we may have one group that stands out amongst the rest so I'm going to save this we'll save it as instead of basic op art I'm going to change the title to you it's not let me there we go op art groups and then I'll do one final export so I'm going to export this file export as JPEG using the artboard so it will cut off the parts that are sticking out over the edges we'll go RGB color maximum quality 300 high resolution 300 pixels per inch and that's good for me so have fun with this save your work and update your sketchbooks